Welcome everyone. How's everybody doing? Great. Yeah. Insane. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a fun night tonight. My name is John Rich. I'm the mm -hmm. coordinator for the Department of Cultural Affairs. Like, that's great. Very happy to have you all here as part of our dance residency open studio series. Uh, there's going to be a lot that's going to happen. I'm just here at the beginning to welcome you and to, to say a few things. I do want to welcome those who are physically in the room with us and also on the live stream. Thanks to Tina Dillon for doing captioning on the live stream. Uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, we were not able to have an ASL interpreter here tonight, but the live stream does have captions, so you are welcome to check that out. The live stream does have captions and will be uh, archived, so most of what is presented tonight is wordless, but there will be a conversation afterwards as well, and all of that will be captioned online. And I will make sure that everyone has that website. You can check it out at chicagoculturalcenter.org, and that will have a link to the uh, live stream and the archive. I would like to begin today with a land acknowledgement. Chicago is situated on the lands of the Potawatomi people. They were the stewards of this land and lived, loved, and cared for it until forced out by non-native settlers. Tribes who have historical relationships with the lands in greater Chicago and northern Illinois through trade, travel, and habitation include the Ottawa, Ojibwe, Peoria, Kaskaskia, Miami, Pochunk, Sac, and Fox, Mascutin, and Menominee, as well as mound builders and other tribes whose names have been lost as a result of genocide and ethnocide of European colonialism and United States expansion. It is our responsibility to acknowledge this historical context, and we commit to honoring the history, traditions, and achievements of Native American peoples, as well as recognizing the diverse and thriving American Indian community, which laid the foundation for the city of Chicago and continues to make Chicago home. Thank you. So just a few other things. Uh, tonight we are going to be uh, hanging out with Christopher Knowlton and his collaborators. Uh, Chris will be coming up in a moment to introduce everybody. Uh, restrooms in the building are directly across the hall. You'll see the signage for them. Uh, it's a very casual environment tonight, as you may have already gathered. So if you feel like you would like to get up, stretch your legs, you're welcome to do that. Uh, we are live streaming though, so if you have the ability to uh, cross behind the desk, you're welcome to, but there is absolutely nothing stopping you from walking across the space if you need to. So, so please know that we welcome you to move through the space as you need. Uh, reminder to turn off your phones or your devices, or silence them. Of course, we do also have a photographer in the room tonight, so be mindful of that movement. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, information on this series is at the website chicagoculturalcenter.org. Next week on Thursday, we will be welcoming an open studio for another one of our resident artists, Gene Wildest, and I hope that you will check that out. There are six artists who are participating in this uh, reopening of the dance studio here at the Cultural Center, and so we hope that you come back. We are here every second Tuesday of the month, and some additional dates through June, celebrating new work that's being created as part of a funded residency program. Uh, unfortunately, in it, uh, aside from the dance studio, the rest of the building is closed this evening, but we certainly encourage you to come back and enjoy the many exhibitions. Uh, there are some uh, brochures that are outside, and I will bring some in that you can take to, so that you have information about what's happening in the Chicago Cultural Center right now. Uh, again, thank you all for being here. I will turn it over to Chris and the team, and uh, enjoy. Hi, um, I'm so sorry this feels like a show. It's not really. It's just an open <laughs> studio rehearsal, so we're rehearsing. But we just wanted to invite you in the process. We're about six weeks in. Um, my name's Chris. I am a movement artist, I guess. Um, I also work with some technology. Um, and also a science researcher. Um, I have a really fabulous collaborative team, um, and mostly we're just using the mic just for just for audibility um, for people in the room and also people uh, virtually. But I'm going to have my team. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves because they're wonderful artists, you know, and they're all right. Um, so would you like to 
like to say your name and maybe say a little background. You can come to my mic or you can shout out. I have a pixel problem, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I am Josh. I'm the production manager. Great. Um, so thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we're going to just show you some of the weird stuff uh, that we've been doing and we'll continue to do for the next however many weeks till the end of June. Um, and like John said, the other artists that are going to be here are absolutely so I highly recommend checking out their open studios too. It's always wonderful to see work in process and see how the how the cookies are made, I guess. Um, so um, thank you for joining us. But we're just gonna dive into it, so feel free to observe. Um, I also don't mind if you like take photos or, or video you guys are welcome to yes. Do you want? No? No, right. Yeah. We want to do our first little sound. <laughs>
Why are you whispering? Can I know. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's like playing the same thing. They're currently like they're it's the same sound, even though it's different sensors. So they're they're kind of plugged into the same instrument. Um, so I'm wondering, uh, do another <laughs> facing away. So you have to the listen. Maybe just face the opposite way. Two is going to be the kind of score. And I think we will turn on E and G. Actually, so maybe face like Scott. Actually, and maybe face like. But yeah. Um, but it's cool to see that, like, with the EMG, you guys, you know, you tend to be a little more in place, right, with this score, and then these have a lot of other ones, so it's kind of cool. Um, Question? So we'll, 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 we'll,
It should be. I'll show you the app, but I was also just snapping some pictures uh, during the performance we just watched. And um, basically what, what this is doing is detecting human bodies in motion and putting um, a 3D avatar, we sometimes call it. Thank you. In order to represent what it looks like, we're not going to probably use this particular model. We'll use something that's more transparent and maybe more interesting visually. Um, but just to give you an idea of what, um, what how this works. Do I have the mic No, I'm okay. All right. So at this point, thank you, Chris. Give us a way. <laughs> <laughs> Can you uh, turn the live stream camera? Just I don't think they're seeing that screen. So the, no, the live stream. So you notice it tracks joints, all the different joints, and uh, we'll be making use of that as uh, sort of parametric control of the synthesis of sound. It's kind of fun to watch at this point, it only tracks one person. And so when the whole group was up, and also there's someone that's on the screen and was jumping around tracking different, you know, different stuff. Yeah, go up there and do more figures. Does anybody want to hop in? <laughs> so it, it, you know, it tracks distance as well, and that's how far it is. And um, the other thing we're doing is we're creating a, uh, uh, a stage that has multiple dancers. And that, um, we got to bring that up. So, uh, the idea with this is, um, <laughs> one of the ideas is to use augmented reality to transmit people into a virtual space to be able to dance together, even though you're not in the same room together. Um, it's gonna jump around a lot. Um, so, uh, and in that way, I could sort of in three dimensional space, maybe be dancing with someone here, but instead of having to look at my phone or look at a Zoom screen, maybe I'm hearing uh, their movement and hearing my interaction with them, how close they are, uh, if we're in contact, maybe how much we're in contact. So to try to use this sort of 3D technology, maybe not for something fun and flashy, but like um, like a FaceTime, but for movement. So like body time 
or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Bill, do you want to? There's another, there's another part of the work um, There's another part of the work where, uh, as Chris mentioned, you have multiple multiple dancers in, in different areas. Uh, and so in this case, up on the right here, we have uh, essentially the stage that shows all the dancers. The current dancer um, is in green, and I'll make a few more of these. So now we have two dancers, and as each dancer moves, I'm sorry, let me move this up. As each dancer moves, its position is reflected to the other dancers and to the stage as a well. whole. And uh, it works. So it works across devices. I was showing you different uh, instances on my um, my laptop, but I can also join the uh, join the dance you know, remotely. And as I move around, I see the others uh, on stage. That's, that's, yeah, that's very could, could, uh, could you explain that a little bit more elaborately? I'm sorry? I didn't quite follow. Can you, can you explain that? Explain it again? Sure. Um, it's basically a network uh, application where you can have multiple dancers across the network that are reflected on the combined view of the stage, uh, but also to each other. And one of the next things we're going to do with it is um, add sound so that the uh, so that each of the dancers can sort of tell the distance from the other is just with sound. That's just a starting point for bringing sound into um, uh, sensing, you know, the other dancers' uh, proximity. And um, and then the next step is to bring the the AR, you know, the body tracking into this and get rid of these so they're robotic looking things and have the have them be animated by actual dancers that are being viewed through the camera. So that's sort of the trajectory of, of, of the project for, for this part of it. So yeah. so each dancer would have a own app on it? I yes. Think. Correct, exactly. Okay. Thank you actually said that. Yeah. Or the audience well, yeah. whoever's yeah it helps sort of somebody. Can I ask another question? Sure. Yeah, yeah. actually, and this we're just gonna bleed right okay. into. I'd like to ask a question of the sound yeah. guy. Please go ahead. Um, I'm listening to when they were dancing, and I'm hearing whale songs. Was that? We went to the ocean and recorded whales. Did you really? No, no. <laughs> well, there are people who um, do so. I mean, am I, am I, is it just coincidence or did you? Yeah, so th those are all humans, and we pitched them up or down so people uh, might okay. sound lower or higher. Right, right. It was the talk song. Yeah. Okay. It reminded me of the voice. So the way those people made it might be how fast to record it is playing through itself. Okay. If you're recording slower, it's going to sound lower in pitch. Sure. 
So that's how they can tell how far they are from each other. That's right. I'm coming. So that the people online can see us too. Yes, so please ask us any questions. I can't guarantee we can answer them. Please. We'd love to hear impressions, what you saw, questions, curiosities. What's the use case for the rack? I think it's still coming up. Bruce, do you want to take that? Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, we're hoping to allow people to dance together. We work together on a special stage. On a stage or in your, like, that you turn your phone towards you. And like I said, maybe it's a bit of like a FaceTime, but for dancing. But you can bring your performers together with dancers in different ways. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so it's a kind of put together performance seven states. Yeah, yeah, uh, countries away. We are, as you mentioned, um, some of our inspiration is um, echolocation, particularly in mammals, using sound to locate and to be able to communicate um, and to um, sort of strengthen strength social bonds. So um, we are curious about echoes and echolocation. Uh, Echo networks and that that sort of thing, and, and even echo location in humans, which we use classically and actively. Um, so, yeah, that's that's sort of the vision use case. So performative or maybe kind of socially. Uh, but, cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Go ahead, Scott. I've got a great seat right behind two of the laptops that are tracking the soul sensors in the <laughs> shoes of the dancers. And while listening, watching, and then watching the the soul sensors here. I was still unable to track the origin of the uh, the movement origin of activation of any sound. So, were you? How? What are you doing there? What are you? What is what the What is the link between that? Yeah, that's a really good question. The, the reason why we were unable to tell who was who is because they were playing the same instrument. Um, we got this work. I got this working last night. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but not tonight. So, but, okay. you, but yes, the next step is. Um, Maybe Nejla is playing a violin and Helen is playing a string bass. Okay. Or a clarinet and a drum machine or whatever. But they were they were playing the same synthesizer. Okay. Yeah. I'll just say one small thing. It's it's um, tough because do you treat it as an instrument, something that you have to play while you're dancing, or is it something that you're affecting that they, you are affecting the environment just by living in it? So it can be a spectrum between the two, and it's sort of an artistic choice. Yeah. Uh, just something to add. Um, when we're making these digital instruments that are body reactive, we can make a choice of how of how strictly do we want to match with the body. So is it Mickey Mouse falling down the stairs in a cartoon where you hear the nugget scale on the piano, or is it something a bit more unknowable, a bit more complex? So when you if you hear Mickey Mouse falling down the stairs twice, it gets kind of boring. But if you complex by the situation a bit. If there's something that the audience doesn't quite get, there could be some drama there. Yeah, great question. Yeah. Good. Chris, thank you for having us today. Your work reminded me of the art on the mark, Nick Cave over the summer. Did you ever showcase your work like that? And by the way, he looks like a DJ that performs in Millennium Park. Like <laughs> 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 So I'll just repeat it. Um, so she said that the, the, what she saw today reminded her of Art in the Mark, particularly in the cave and the cave sound suits. Um, so, so that video is of the cave sound suits. I'm extremely flattered. Um, Congratulations. Anyway. Thank you. Um, I, I will say, you know, I, I know that work, uh, and it's, it's, it's genius, um, but it, that deals with um, wearable acoustic instruments. Um, so it is, it, it's um, sound that is driven by movement, but but they're you know they're wearing it. So we are dealing with um, digital instruments that so driven by sort of digital data. So there's a connection there. Um, uh, uh, just but because we're focusing on maybe a networking aspect, that's why we're kind of gone digital. If that makes sense. So, and networking. Um, networking. <laughs> is um, what you do to get a job. Uh, <laughs> but, um, oh, folks. I'll be your own. Um, uh, so the networking, uh, when I talk about networking, I'm talking about being uh, connected over what we now know as the internet. 
um, so uh, to, uh, transmission of some sort. Um, but of course, we have social networks that exist even without electronics. Um, and, and so uh, some of what I'm looking at now is to say, how do networks exist in nature? And how does communication over long distance happen in nature? And can we take inspiration from that? And so that's a practice called biomimicry, um, to, to mimic um, biological systems uh, in order to solve complex problems. Uh, anyway, so um, thank you. I, I, I would, yeah, this, this obviously has a visual element, which Enki is doing some just incredible sound reactive visuals. Um, and I could see it having a life on something like uh, our common mind. Any other questions? I have a question. Now, dealing with that augmented reality, and can you guys take these uh, figurines or the big figures that have uh, that replicate human movement and take those images individually and groups and copy and paste and duplicate them? Yeah. Also working. Uh, maybe through a mathematical thing or scale, where it'd be the same image, but it'd be scaled back in the distance and work using perspective. Yeah, I mean, the simple answer is yes, but uh, it gets to be an interesting, you know, artistic question of what's, what's, what, how are you working the scale? And, you know, how take those same be? images and invert them. So it's mirror same image is reversed and doing the opposite because it's weird. And then take those images and almost turn that into like a ballet. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, Chris, you? Uh, I'll just say what's next first. As a mock up, um, alone in my room, I doubled myself and mirrored myself and then tried to dance with the self that is not there. So, Very um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it should be my last project, yeah. Um, and yeah, so, um, but that's also just an option because, you know, before I would have the opportunity here to have dancers in space, um, sometimes you just have to work alone in your room. Um, but that's the opportunity to, to play the scale, play with um, doubling, mirroring, um, repositioning, like lots of, lots of opportunities. It seems to me oh, that what, what you brought up and the opportunity there is kind of, is one of the main one of the main motivations here, I think, right? Is to be able to, to move and hear and interact with the these with, with yourself or with um, an, an entity, a being, a space that kind of reflects the imagination. And that's that's the artistic challenge. It's a technical challenge too, but it's it's primarily an artistic challenge. Yeah. Brian, do you have one? Well, I was interested in the, in, in the time of uh, performance. And if I'm performing with somebody in Berlin, and maybe I have this totally misunderstood, isn't there a time delay? And how do how do we compensate for that? I'll ask a quick. I know I can talk about. Yeah, I think. Um, Actually, that question, the delay uh, and the issue of lag or delay, network delay, is actually what led me to be interested in echo uh, and, and using the delay of sound reflection to actually navigate your environment. So I'm curious about how that delay can be an opportunity. Um, I also think about the sun. We're not seeing the sun in real time. We're seeing the sun eight and a half minutes after. But I, like, you know, so we're seeing a past on. And so I think there's an opportunity of dancing with a past, uh, uh, a person in the past, <laughs> but in a different location. Um, and just to speak to that um, aspect of latency, um, the technical term, um, we ourselves biologically, of course, have latency as well, right? Like something actually happens to you, or you, you send something, and it takes a moment for it to, to get there. Um, and neurologically, we of course, have blind spots in our eye. And it's interesting how we work with um, that or incorporate it into our, our existence. Um, so I think that's kind of another question that we, we are exploring in, in, in this um, discovery, is to say how what happens with relation, 
what happens with a kind of connection, whether it's, you know, the network is like this abstract term, which is both, uh, you know, a digital wireless concept, um, a social concept, a relational concept. So they're all just relations that we're playing with. Um, and then also just the neurological of, you know, how do we handle these little gaps? Like that, the most common one is, or not the most common, but whenever you catch a ball, um, you're actually moving to anticipate where you thought it was. You're doing all this correction in anticipation. So I think all the dancers are also anticipating. Um, as a, I think the technologists are all latent <laughs> um, because we're all using software that's reacting to the signal and it can't anticipate. Um, but the dancers are all anticipating each other and seeing and feeling and anticipating what's going to happen and then we're kind of working technologically um, to either kind of expand that or explore that relation. I'm going to open it up to the movers. Does anyone have any questions for the movers? I would love to know what's your background and do you still this though your interpretation of Chris's work is coming across in the final project? We're still in the very early stages. My background is um, from Germany and with Turkish, Armenian, Egyptian uh, roots. And um, my training is um, in modern Tanz theater and um, contemporary. And um, yeah, like it's still um, a discovery for us. We just um, started working with these instruments, I call them instruments, it's kind of like playing, playing space in a way, you have to find the container for the instruments or the choices that um, you know, Scott made and then oh, we try to translate that and play it by moving faster or slower or um, breath also is part of that. Like when you hold your breath, your muscles are tighter and you make more sound and when you release your breath, then the sound kind of gets diluted. There's a lot of to discover. And if you don't make it happen, what does that mean? 
Um, but yeah, just kind of going with it for now. It, it feels so early on in the process, which is different for me. I'm very used to product-based rehearsals, um, in, like my own processes like that. So I'm loving these researchals a lot. Um, Chris's coin term. But yeah, it's been really great. Um, and I'm looking forward to working on it more. Researchal is a new journal after, and everyone kind of talks, chats, and I think I love that checking at the end. Uh, is there any other questions? Who had a question? Anyone else have any comments? Anything that kind of struck you? Anything that you are wondering about? Go ahead. Hey, thanks everyone so much for sharing. So everyone has said it's really early on, really early on. Um, but I'm curious, Chris has said that uh, there are maybe many things going on. We sort of see what sticks, right? What works and what, what the group has an appetite for. Uh, we also talk about it in terms of toys, and maybe like you get some favorite toys on your time. So I wonder, does anybody have an appetite for anything yet? Is there something that's sticking out? Is there a favorite toy? Does anybody see anything sort of falling away or falling into disuse? Who wants to answer? Scott loves his toys. <laughs> I can see the synthesizer falling away. I don't really like it. Um, I, I think I prefer human made sounds and then you twist them digitally so they stick in the uncanny valley where we don't know if they're human made or not. So um, when you hear a voice that uh, someone said was pitched down, it's like a whale. Um, that's a human. It's just the computer has turned it a little bit. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't want to use a synthesizer anymore. Yeah, as a mover too, I enjoy the human sounds more that sound like nature, like breathing or clapping or um, wailing. Those are very interesting to me. Technological means, 
um but there's some pop artists image and he famously uses some um, digital instruments uh stretch centers on the hand gloves um she helped develop that uh, a system and commercial effort too um th there's a, a number of uh, sort of digital instruments uh out in the world just using data to drive sound in some way um there's also a lot of augmented reality work um uh, I'll point out a few here in Chicago. Claudia Hart at Scully Art Institute um, does some excellent uh, augmented reality work. Uh, Admar, Anatomical Theaters of Mixed Reality, who I formerly performed with, which is Mark Jeffrey and Jim Morrissey, also Scully Art Institute. Um, uh, and there's, there's a number, um, uh, there's also an artist here in the audience, if I may point them out. Von Stell also does some augmented reality performance work and, and fashion design. Um, so th depending on what, Art. Um, there are there's def there's a community of artists. Um, uh, I'm also part of the movement computing conference community. Um, Garrett is also part of that, and, and so that's a sort of global community of artists and, and academics that um, sort of share their their work on those sides. Long way to answer, but um. okay. What stood out for people? What what what? We're gonna get to what Nikki was asking. Who's to go? Feel free, anyone. Definitely, I was so grateful when you said, are the flashing lights bothering you? Mm -hmm. And I actually realized that I zoned out that area of the artwork. It's kind of like when you go to the Art Institute and you're just inundated with all the impressionists, but your eye just focuses on the one thing that knocks your socks off. So for me, I was attracted to the beauty of the dancers. And they're so remarkable that I didn't watch them dance like I would a performance. I was watching your art piece. So for, in reference to what you were asking, I think in some way you're able to kind of zone out what's not vibing with you and you just find what you love. I concur. <laughs> you, this reminds me, I went to UIC. There was a guy named Dan Sandine. I don't know if you know his name. And he had this thing called uh, the image processor. And they had this, it was futuristic. 30 years ago, I'm dating myself, that's fine. <laughs> and they think that was an um, electronic visualization lab, which was really high tech. But that's what, some of this reminded me of that. But I agree with what she said, that I found it somewhat too hard to watch and concentrate. I didn't say that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> for me. I liked it all. Well, I like some more than others. Gotcha. This to me was somewhat is harder to watch, uh, but I wanted to watch the, what I found really compelling and entertaining and visually pleasing was when they the dancers work and they move the light around. They're doing. I really dug that. I did. The other stuff was somewhat of a. It was like somebody trying to tell you that, that broccoli was good for you, <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. That's a strange analogy, but I did like this. The other part with the, it was too hard for me to concentrate on what I was supposed to be looking at. So the question of like wide projections. Hey, was it meant to be visceral? So the frequencies on the left, it seemed like each of the dancers had their own. Sometimes they were in unison and the imaging was like, one on top of the other, just like a little bit off. But it moved like as if though it was like resonating to the dancers on the far left. So on, on the far left, it had to be kind of a big pointy grid yeah. most of the time. And I'm sorry for monkeying around the whole time. Um, <laughs> but, um, so that, yeah, it, it had a, um, it was it was referencing off of the sound that was being produced. Um, and so that was modulating uh, the width of the line, the color of the line. Um, and also the, the, the um, Z displacement. So um, we were taking a 2D image, like a flat thing, and then taking the luminosity um, and giving that a, 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 a Z component like in the space. And that's, so that was my thing with all three of those things were effective. So when the two dancers, Nashua and Haley, right? Helen, Helen, sorry. You guys were finding the way back to each other without looking. At some point when I glanced over it, it was basically the same. You would occasionally see one color overlap the other. So is that showing two dancers? Um, so that's interesting. It's, this is part of the discovery process. That's just low resolution. <laughs> 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 
which happy coincidence I'm happy with. <laughs> Anything else from anyone else? Shoot them at us. What did you, what resonated with you most? Quite a deal. What did you want? Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually talking on the floor for some reason. I think you enjoyed it too. Probably. Yeah. 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 With your with your projector helmet. I loved it. I loved doing it. I highly recommend it. It's really fun. Yeah. I love it. Good. So so what what I connected with most was when uh, the dancers began to interact with each other physically and touch mm. each other. I'm someone. My relationship with augmented reality, virtual reality, communication over distance, we're never together. Um, it's difficult for me because I am so hotwired to look at someone's face, look at someone's whole face, and do that back and forth in real time that I feel the lack of it. But like everybody's different and everyone has a different tolerance, different tolerance for it and a different appreciation of what it does offer. So my question for anyone who wants to answer is what is your comfort level or appreciation of augmented reality, VR, whether it's this project or just in general, and, and like where do you fall on that spectrum of or combination of like this this is good and this is bad because e everything is good and bad. You know, everything ever is good and bad. Everything offers up and takes away. So what is it like for you? I can interject real really quick and I'll give it to you. We had magical moments in research all when you guys and I think you guys noticed it too, when you guys made a connection, you saw the dancers almost have a visceral change by hearing the sounds change and hearing when they touch each other, how that, like, told, it was, I mean, you saw Helen's mouth drop at one time. Like, you, it was just beautiful. Yeah, this is an interesting question. It's um, the body, it comes back to the body. The body is the best technology we have and the, like, most uh, developed and all the other technologies just don't match to it, like it's toy that we are currently trying to get to the level of the body, the subtleties of the body, the, the, I don't know, there's so many levels to the body, and so it's kind of interesting to be in the room as an embodied person and see everybody struggling with the technology and then um, bringing it back to the body in this like, um, it's still to be, still for me, the augmented and the virtual. It is not like working with body and touch. Yeah. So I don't know if I answered you the question. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious about the different experience, and then in this process with augmented reality, I'm curious about getting away from screens. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm curious about turning the phone away from you um, and having this sort of augmented sound experience that's in 3D. Um, just because maybe the past three years and having to communicate through screens a lot, um, just to say like maybe we can get away from the screen, even though we have. We had a lot of screens today. <laughs> um, uh, so that's my curiosity with augmented reality in this project this time around. But wonderful question. And, and that question remains constantly um, to use the technology and to question it. So, so your, your approach to three dimensional sound is strictly going to be based on pitch and, and amplitude? I, 
What, what are you using to get to make the sound? So there were two things going on today. One was that really crunchy synthesizer. Yeah. That was mostly in the feet. The other one were these, um, these snapping, uh, people making weird sounds with their cheeks, yeah. um, um, singing, some growling, um, sounds made by humans. Mm -hmm. So everything has a pitch. You know, right. when, when you but burp, he just said three-dimensional sound. And that's oh, what I mean, all sound is three-dimensional. All sound vibrates off the walls. Yeah, right? well, we, we live in a three-dimensional space. Can you put the person so, more questions after this? After you start that's all right. It's okay. No, we'll talk later about it. No, no, it's fine. I know. We're going to have to double one. We're going to have to double one. Stuff, we're also going to be talking about everyone, too. We're just taking two more questions. Yeah, we, we also had a moment where we were able to pan the sound. Um, mm -hmm. That was kind of cool. And I hope we return to that so that if I lean this way, the sound comes out that speaker. If I lean this way, it comes out that so speaker. So you're using multiple speakers? Yes. Are you talking about episodics? No, no, I think. So we're also hoping to play with the. We're talking about the perception to the dancer of the three dimensional. Three-dimensionality. Yeah. No, it's you know how if they're standing there and there's a how do they know that the dancer is here versus here? That's it, it, yeah, they don't like it. Okay. Well, so, he had said three-dimensional, so that's what I'm. Yeah, we're getting there. It's week six. Okay. So that's, <laughs> that's a great right question. Yeah. What what method are you using yeah. to help them yeah. do that? You have to have a 3D system of speakers. Yeah, you know. we, well, we have some thoughts about that. You can do it other ways too. Yes, there are other ways. We can work with rhythm, we can work with time. Yeah, I'll talk to you about this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm fascinated by this question. Um, <laughs> the way you localize any position, right? Like, right? You, you yeah. can tell, right? So in your head, you're actually receiving something. Yeah. No, I understand that. Right. <laughs> no, I, I understand it a lot. Okay, so, <laughs> and I don't understand. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how he's using it and how the dancers are going to be able to effect. Come back to the final studio. I'm interested in how blind people yes. could use that. Tell I know you know why that. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's obvious. And also, not a question, but um, you mentioned neurology, and if you're interested in more in that path, I'm interested in facilitating. I, I just wanted to, to also comment on your point about spatial three-dimensional sound. And I don't know, from my simple perspective, it kind of depends on the system we have to work with. If you, when you're in a three-dimensional space and you only have two new speakers, you know, yeah. that's not going to happen, you need more. But when you're in, say, headphones, you you can get you can direct yes. you can get better energy yes. in terms of the, yes. the front and back. But they're not wearing headphones. That's why I would no. Know. And DKs doesn't have a quadraphonic right. the sound yeah. system, but um, maybe someone can donate to that. Okay. <laughs> Darn. 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 Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you